Welcome to the first podcast for twirlers by twirlers. In an effort to promote and popularize baton twirling around the world, we bring you behind the curtain with us to see how baton twirling has helped change lives. Thank you for supporting us in our mission by listening to the Baton Twirling Podcast. Today we're speaking with Shaylee Fawcett, who's the owner and mastermind of Only Twirlers. This is a clothing line for, well, twirlers. You may have seen some of her very popular shirts at Nationals. They include I Survived the Blue Curtain and This Is My Illusion shirt. Head over to batontwirlingproject.com for a link to browse through Only Twirlers. Thank you so much for coming on with us to talk to the Baton Twirling Podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your business and what you do for the Baton Twirling world. So my name is Shaylee Fawcett. I'm originally from Southern California, currently living in Provo, Utah. Um, I'm the owner and creator of Only Twirlers. You can find us at OnlyTwirlers.com and Only Twirlers on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It actually Only Twirlers started as a Twitter page that I had mm-hmm. just growing up, just wanting to tweet funny stuff about baton twirlers. And from there, it got a lot of traction on Twitter, developed that into a website. And then three years ago, and I was at... Oh, sorry, two years ago at AYLP for MBTA Nationals. Um, you know, I attended 16 times as a competitor, a few times after that, after retiring from twirling. And, you know, the tradition of going shopping the Monday before competition starts. <laughs> and my sister, mom, and I are walking around all the stores. And I'm like, man, everything has looked the same since I was six years old. Yes. <laughs> it's just, there's nothing fresh. There's nothing new. There's nothing that speaks to the modern twirler today that's an athlete and a performer. And I decided next year I was going to be coming to AYLP with my own line of modern twirling clothes. The first shirt I came up with was the I Survived the Blue Curtain, and that just took off <laughs> and really launched my business. So um, from there, it's evolved into kind of a platform for twirling information, for takeovers, mm-hmm. and for modern twirling apparel as well. Great. Um, so where can we find you at AYOP in July? Yeah, so the past couple of years I've been at Spaybridge Suites. Mm-hmm. Um, I share a room with gorgeous twirling costumes, um, and awesome. we have I – I love them. They're awesome. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we share a room there. So it's kind of one-stop place to shop. Come in, get it fitted for a new costume, check out some bling, and check out our shirts. How did you get connected with uh, gorgeous twirling costumes? So I'm originally from Southern California. I grew up um, twirling and competing there. So Patty Glimp is the owner of Gorgeous yeah. Twirling Costumes, and I competed with her daughters and you know all of our family are friends and things there. So Patty and I have known each other pretty much my whole life, so got in contact that way. Oh, wow. How did you first get started with baton twirling? So I was born into a baton twirling family. My grandma, Debbie Salem, is a coach. Okay. My mom was a college <laughs> of, of America, world champion, so... I was born with a baton in my hands, um, loved watching them teach and coach, I always looked up to the big kids in my group, twirled with Matt Freeman and Rebecca Lance most of my life, and mm-hmm. yeah, just grew up in that world. So where did you twirl in college? So I graduated from Brigham Young University and okay. was a baton twirler here and just graduated in December, so. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> How exciting. <Thank> <laughs> What is your most favorite experience of uh, twirling at college? Or did you ever twirl with the band or anything? Yeah, so I actually didn't get to twirl with the band at BYU. Our band director um, is not a big fan of baton twirlers, despite my best efforts. Kind of a funny story, but I was able to make my kind of my own position at BYU. Twirled a bunch of basketball games, volleyball, gymnastics different campus events, things like that. Through our sports marketing program is really the ones who gave me the chance to be able to share my talents with the state of Utah and with the BYU community. And I ended up working for BYU Sports Marketing all through college and eventually went on to work with the Los Angeles Dodgers and now oh. I'm doing a master's degree in athletic administration. So nice. don't take answer when you want to build a twirl somewhere you never know what kind of opportunities it's going to lead to so that actually brings me to an interesting topic because we had to twirl for basketball games and then we started doing volleyball and um, gymnastics Mm -hmm. of all things uh so how how would you encourage twirlers who are either in high school or college to approach those types of organizations like the basketball volleyball um or gymnastics organizations how would you how would you encourage them to approach those? And what other advice would you give twirlers to approach those types of organizations to twirl? 
I think being able to talk about and explain baton twirling and what you do as an athlete is super important when approaching those entities that don't know a lot about twirling. Um, You need to be prepared the best possible to represent not only yourself, Mm -hmm. but baton twirling as well. So that when they do give you that chance to audition randomly to like, Hey, we had someone cancel for a half time. Can you come? Like you need to be prepared for those situations. Um, as far as approaching them with that initial contact, videos are always a great thing. Don't make it too mm-hmm. long. Don't make it too short. Show those flashy things so people can get a sense of what you're trying to do. Because honestly, a lot of times they just don't know. It's not because they don't want to help you out. They just don't know. So kind of going in and showing them and being like, hey, like I only need a minute or two, like working your way in there and then doing a really good job once you that door has been opened mm-hmm. and taking the opportunities to twirl at those gymnastics meets or a random talent show because if you do a good job of those, it's only going to lead to more things. Okay. What's your proudest moment of baton twirling so far? Oh my goodness, that is a <laughs> hard question. Um, I think personally... One of my favorite memories and things I was most proud of was um, going to Peru as a U.S. twirling ambassador. Um, Being a part of that prestigious group was just something that meant a lot to me. It really cultivated friendships that I will cherish for the rest of my life. And I'm still in contact with people all around the world from that trip. And so it's great to see the global impact that you can really have um, with baton twirling. Um, On a more personal note... Um, I've loved watching my sister twirl. Um, Mm -hmm. She's in 13 to 15 right now, and it's just amazing to see her grow as a twirler and a performer. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I would have been able to do that. (laughs) So um, it's super, I get super excited to see her um, continuing to twirl and have those special times together. Great. Um, So if you could encourage or had any advice for, um, twirlers or even anyone listening to this podcast for starting their own business, what advice would you give them? Oh, it is so fun. I would just <laughs> like to start by saying that if you're not having fun with your own business, then something is wrong. Yeah. Um, finding <laughs> something you're passionate about is a huge part of it because um, for me, like I've always loved the athletics atmosphere and things and being able to take some knowledge that I had learned from my job outside of owning only twirlers be able to apply that to the baton twirling world which I feel like I know a lot about that was a big thing so being able to combine something you're passionate about with something that you have a good knowledge about um additionally I would say find that need in the market like I said Mm -hmm. before I saw that there was a need for new shirts new apparel (laughs) people wanted to spend money at AYLP and they couldn't because they already had that shirt six times (laughs) over um so finding that need in the market, I think, is key to be, it, to be able to be successful. Okay, funny side story. I have at least 20 of those Notre Dame twirling with a little yes. shamrock. I know exactly what you're talking about because that was the only shirt you could buy every year. They just changed the date out on it. Yeah. <laughs> and not saying anything negative about the shirts, but I do believe that we need something different. And they cornered the market for a really long time. And I'll still buy that shirt every single year. But <laughs> yeah. T-shirt quilt one day. Like, it's great. Yeah, exactly. The t-shirt quilt. I'm in the process of making one of those right now. <laughs> but now we're adding all of your clothes to it. My mom called me immediately after you guys had your booth at Nationals that year. And she was like, there's a new clothing line. Somebody has twirling shirts. So. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm so excited I get to talk to you. Oh, no, this is so fun. <laughs> so besides being online, can people find you at local contests or where are you most likely to be? Yeah, so it's a little bit hard giving that there's not any baton contests in Utah. <laughs> but so right now, AYLP and the Las Vegas Twirling Classic, we go to every year to sell in person. Some of my life plans are kind of up in the air right now. So mm-hmm. depending on where I'm at in the next few months, um, I could be popping up at some other local contests. So Great. stay tuned for that. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to have you at their contest, be si- and I'm going to throw this out there, you better pay for her to come out. How could they get in touch with you to get you to come out to their contest to sell shirts and apparel? Yeah, that would be awesome. I would absolutely love that. Even if it was just a sponsorship for the booth, I'm happy to come out to whatever competitions. I 
personally run all of our social media. So if you're to send a DM on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, a contact form through our website, that will go directly to me. So that's great. Or even on my personal um, Instagram, Facebook, Shaylee Fawcett, Shaylee Ann on Instagram. That's great, too. I love interacting with people from all over the country, seeing all my twirling friends and spreading the only twirlers love. So I would love to come out to competitions. (laughs) Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on with me and talking with us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. Well, I'm so excited about the future of this podcast and yeah. like being about twirling. And I think it's great just to see so many new things um, for twirling popping up, especially on social media. I think mm-hmm. these platforms are great to reach even beyond the baton twirling community. Like I know all of us are always sharing awesome dance videos that we see and cheer videos. And I think there's no reason those entities can't get involved in seeing cool stuff that twirling is doing as well. I agree. That actually reminds me. So if you guys are listening to this podcast, I want you to go find Only Twirlers and like her page. And I also want you to go find other baton twirling things and watch them a hundred times so we can get more views on social media. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you again for listening to the Baton Twirling Project podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first notified of future episodes so you can stay up to date with Baton Twirling News. Make sure to leave us a positive review on iTunes to help us reach more and more people about Baton Twirling. If you'd like more information about Baton Twirling in your local area, email us at batontwirlingpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you so much for listening and being here. It means so much to baton twirlers everywhere. We'll catch you next time.